Hi, this is Dr. Ruscio, and let's discuss egg-derived immunoglobulins. You may have heard in the past we've discussed bovine-derived immunoglobulins and the very exciting research there. However, for those who want to adhere to a vegetarian diet, thankfully there is also available a vegetarian-compliant egg-derived version of immunoglobulins. Now, what do immunoglobulins do and what are they? Well, immunoglobulins are what you have already in the lining of your intestinal tract that help to bind, neutralize, and deactivate irritants and toxins. This is also known as the mucous membrane of your gut. It's composed of various immunoglobulins, IgE, IgA, IgM. What we can do with supplemental immunoglobulins is give you some additional support as your existing mucous membrane already does in helping to protect your immune system from getting triggered from this, these, these various irritants. And so in effect, by binding to and deactivating irritants like bacterial fragments and toxins, we can reduce inflammation, reduce leaky gut, and therefore lead to an improvement in symptoms. Also remember that two things are crucial for a healthy gut. One, a healthy gut microbiota or the population of fungus and bacteria in your gut. And two, a healthy immune system status, meaning the immune system is not overzealous or too quick to respond to things that it shouldn't. And this too is really where the immunoglobulins come in to help attenuate what could be an otherwise overzealous immune system response that locks one in this kind of cascade of inflammation, leaky guts, reactivity, and thus thwarts healing. Now, who can immunoglobulins help? Really almost anyone, not to paint it as a panacea, but what's really exciting here is the observation and the, the published data really by Weinstock. Now this was used with the bovine immunoglobulins, but it would be suggested that this hopefully could apply to both iterations of the immunoglobulin, whether it's derived from bovine or from egg. And what Weinstock published was that in patients who had not responded to other therapies, they were actually able to see response from immunoglobulins. And why this is so exciting is because it tells you that even if you've gone through some of the gamut of available supports, this support may actually benefit you. And the mention of Weinstock is a good transition into what does the evidence show? I'll put a summary note up here on the screen, but essentially what Weinstock published was that in patients who were diagnosed with either SIBO, IBS, or both, and, and SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and in these patients who were offered a few various treatments, low FODMAP, rifaximin, and didn't really notice a response. So these are patients who are trying to improve their IBS, trying to improve their SIBO, they're being treated with various therapies and not seeing any improvement, then they are given immunoglobulins and a 75% response rate was noted. Now again, I wanna be careful to be clear that this was using the bovine-derived immunoglobulins. We don't have this type of study yet published with the egg-derived, but if you're unwilling to use the bovine-derived, then it certainly seems logical to give a trial to the egg-derived. Now continuing with the research, here is what has been published specifically with the egg-derived immunoglobulins as in our intestinal support formula vegetarian. A pilot study of 13 arthritic patients showed improvements in arthritis and joint pain. Now the second study here is a small pilot study. Now, and I want to be careful because this was published by the manufacturer. So I always take these results with a grain of salt. So uh, a little asterisk of caution here, but here is what they found. Reduced leaky gut, in fact, zonulin, a marker of leaky gut, was decreased by 95%. And also, as a byproduct of reducing leaky gut, one would expect to see reduced inflammation, as they saw here in this study. Additionally, there was an increase in beneficial flora or bacteria, which makes sense knowing that inflammation tends to be 
poisonous to healthy bacteria. If we reduce inflammation, we create a healthier environment for the microbiome to grow and flourish. And this is a key concept, and one of the reasons why it's important not to solely focus on treating the bacteria and fungus in the gut, yes, we want to do that, but also look at the immune system, because the immune system is one of the things that creates the environment, either inflammatory or not ensconced in inflammation, and that environment dictates what populations of bacteria will, will either grow or dwindle. And very exciting also, a little bit more of an advanced concept here, but they showed the ability to lower histamine, and histamine is part of the immune and inflammatory response. So the good news here is that this study is showing as we start to improve the health of your gut, a litany of cascading factors also improve. Reduction of leaky gut, reduction of inflammation, reduction of histamine, and then a flourishing of beneficial populations in the gut. And also, one study found that a combination of probiotics and immunoglobulins actually suppressed H. pylori infection. So even more good news there. And how do you use immunoglobulins? Here's what I'd recommend from some of the research that has tried to look at responses symptomatically over time and kind of charted these out. And essentially, by the second or third week on immunoglobulins, you should be able to notice either a difference or no difference at all. So that's your first reevaluation time point. Now, patients tend to plateau and realize all of their improvements around the eighth or ninth week. Again, these aren't hard set observations, uh, but they give you some general guideposts to look for along your trial of immunoglobulins. So two to three weeks, eight to nine weeks, and then once you've hit your plateau, I would recommend to maintain the protocol that you're using for one to two months to ensure that your new improvements are consistent, and then work to find the minimal effective dose over time. So gradually wean yourself off and find the minimal effective dose. And remember that if you come off and you're feeling great for a number of months and then you have a flare, you can revisit this therapy to help calm down that flare and get you back to your new peak level of improvement. So that's the, the short synopsis on immunoglobulins. I'm, I'm very happy to announce that, to the, my knowledge, we are the only company that offers both the bovine-derived and the egg-derived because it's really important to me that patients who want to improve their gut health have all the tools at their disposal in one place. And while the bovine-derived immunoglobulins are one option for those who want to comply with a vegetarian diet, we, we now offer the egg option. Not as much research behind it, but certainly worth a trial to see if you notice the same level of benefit that has been more robustly documented with the bovine-derived. Okay, this is Dr. Risho. That is the synopsis on immunoglobulins. I hope you try them and benefit from this immune-attenuating anti-inflammatory therapy that can be very helpful for some.